that are perforated so the melting ice drips water down through it. We've got several layers like this that have cheesecloth with the eyed brown trout eggs. And the ones that are opaque are no no good, but all the rest of them are great. We expect to see some attrition. So eggs are wet, That's awesome. and they're they're at a low enough temperature that they don't develop faster than we want them to. And then tomorrow we will bring their temperature up a little bit and place them into uh, boxes, river boxes, and then they'll go into the stream. Yeah, I was gonna say now, Ryan, why are we pulling this one? Uh, bedrock, can't dig down into the gravel. Gotcha. So, not the right substrate, as the scientists would say. obvious the ones that are not good the white ones yeah. the white ones and when we can get them into something that allows us to fluidize them and I think Wes was going to bring a tray and I could not find any tray that would what work at my house but I think this is what we're going to have to to start with is that right now they have a little bit of surface tension that's kind of holding them together it makes it hard to get them sort of safely and so one thing that we can do is we can tip this and get some of them into the you can see the eggs like to stick off, and the ones that are sticking are, are good ones. You want to be careful if you don't cause too much of an issue there. The spring water in here it doesn't take much. It separates. You can start to fluidize them and we can get them down to where they're pretty much at one layer of eggs. Okay. So you can see the ones that are, are no good. Right. And there's lots of ways to do this. And I think we're gonna need some, yeah, let's just be able to do this. We have, an, we have an empty cup, which is easy to do. And then one of the things that we'll do, and I know that Wes, is, Wes has some uh, graduated cylinders and stuff, and we'll use what he's got. But 
the idea really is to be able to count out roughly 500. Today we are installing Vibert egg boxes into Dry Creek, which is all part of the Westover Farms. We're partnered with MDC on this project, and we are implanting uh, brown trout eggs from Utah <clears throat> with the hope that we can get these fish to hatch in the river and survive better. Uh, Missouri Conservation is having a big problem with brown trout survival in this watershed, so we think this is going to be hopefully the solution. And uh, today's round one, many more rounds to come, we hope, and, and, and a lot of success. And, and pretty soon we'll be catching wild brown trout on the Missouri rivers. This is this 100% volunteer day today. Um, I mean, the officers and the board members of TU that are here volunteer. Nobody's getting paid. We're out. We're all out here because. We have this hope and this dream that we can get a new species of brown in our rivers and catch them for years to come. And uh, there's a lot of, a lot of really positive energy here today. Uh, and, and one of our volunteers had mentioned that one of the coolest things about this is everybody's walking around with a lot of hope in their hearts. And <clears throat> with everything that's going on right now with the pandemic, it's just a fun day to be outside. bank of the flag and then you kind of walk out to the point of the stream where it's the deepest mm -hmm. and it should be nice loose gravel and that's what we're going to dig and stick okay. them in. Center so, stream. What's that? Center stream you said? Yeah it's, it's you know it's, it's where, where the, the deep where it's the, called the, where the thaw bucks. wag we yeah. learned this morning. And okay. it, we, we, we need this gravel because it's clean gravel okay. and it, it allows those fish when they hatch to swim in between. So, and that's what the, the browns do when they're when they're making their beds is they're cleaning all the junk out in between the gravel so the fry have a place to live and be safe. Um. We don't want the first thing to happen to them is they come out of that gravel and go straight into the mouth of a hungry fish. And this stretch of water right in here has quite a few fish in it. All right, so every one of these boxes has a little tag on it. The idea is that we just want to make some kind of a knot to the basket. In the event the thing rolls over, they'll stay together. When we get to the site, we're going to walk up here. We'll surround this with gravel, the clean gravel that we've got in our box. And we're going to set this thing in the water. I'm going to show you kind of what we're looking for in terms of water feature at every one of these sites. Basically, if I'm looking straight across the stream at that flag planted on the other side, you're wanting the deepest area in that cross section, right? We've got a surveyor flag down on the ground. You're seeing it right across from it. We've got a couple of different spots that are, are nice and deep. And in this particular section, there's some clay that the gravel is sitting on. So we don't really need to disturb too much of this or it's going to get real silty immediately. So we want to find those couple of deepest spots. This came up a bit since yesterday too from the rain. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. So we want to be mindful that wherever we choose is not a place that it might run a little bit dry in the next few weeks if we don't get any more rain. I like seeing some velocity here because it's going to keep carrying oxygenated water to those fish and if silt does start coming down from a rain event or something, that extra velocity will keep it moving past and will settle on it. Now we're, we want to give the, the fish sort of a refuge all the way around the box. Alright, so we're, we're set on this one. making a little hump in front of it and then on top of it.
at TU, we are all about the next generation because those are the stewards of our environment 10 years from now, 15 years from now. And getting them out here as kids, getting their hands dirty, you know, they can come down here 10 years from now and they catch a brown trout. That is what they did when they were little. So we think it's, it, it's incredible. It's great having them out here. And it's, it's the way that we, we guarantee uh, longevity for our organization. Well, these young kids, they're the future here. And uh, you know, the younger we get them involved, um, it's going to be better for all of us. You know, we have a big challenge pre uh, conserving our natural resources here in the state of Missouri uh, and in the United States and worldwide for that matter. And uh, I, I hope these, these young kids can figure it out and uh, help uh, make the world a little bit better place.